Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I'm Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is session number 171. I remember a few years ago, we had uh, a case of instant restenosis, multi-layered, that had been done with radiation. Today, we have another similar case, although not with that many number of layered stents, but an under-expanded stent, instant restenosis. And let us show you what are the best ways to treat it in 2023. With this introduction, let me take you to the cardiovascular laboratory where Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney are ready. Samin, good morning. I should have probably added uh, with the uh, imaging. Yep. Good morning, uh, Samir, and of course, uh, good morning to our viewers of the CCC Live, which actually have been uh, so helpful. Uh, I just came back with the two meetings in India. Every third person approached me and said that how gratifying those cases are. The complexity, the latest data is amazing. And we thank our audience, which is both. Actually, now it's almost for 35, 35% are USA and India. They have, India may be a little higher than even USA. And of course, remaining 170 plus countries, but has been a tremendous uh, journey. So, and we try to come up with a, uh, new challenges and new disease scenario. And this one is with a multi-layer stent, under-expanded. And also, since the stent was many years ago, now has developed calcific neoatherosclerosis totally different, uh, uh, slightly different, uh, uh, I would say, the disease scenario. And of course, uh, with Anu, my left side, and we have our fellows, uh, two, three fellows, and the rest of the uh, our cat lab staff, usual faces, and in imaging, uh, Kiski. With that note, Anu, we start this case. Yeah. Uh, let's see this uh, uh, case here. Uh, we start the slide. So now what we did is, is because one of the topic which I'm going to talk about is the microvascular. So Joe Sweeney, one of my associates will be here as a discussant for the microvascular disease a little later. Uh, this is like I said, case number 171. Uh, patient is 64 year old with chronic uh, coronary disease for many years, has a multiple stents in the past, uh, recently had a class three angina and a positive stress test as a pre-op for his spinal laminectomy surgery. Uh, rest of the risk factors are there, uh, and uh, patient has a mild LV dysfunction. Uh, good medical therapy and cardiac cath actually revealed two vessel disease. Uh, they have a proximal 70% um, proximal to mid LED with the under expanded calcific multi stent ISR with neoatherosclerosis, which was detected on IVAS, which I'm going to show. Then also has a jailed diagonal 2. Uh, with the Medina 111 and 90% CERC LPL with the non of there is a old chronic total occlusion of the ISR of the OM2. Then RCA was okay with the EF of 48% and syntax code 28. So this patient then, uh, let me just show you what it was. We always start showing now uh, what we had done previously. See that uh, disease in the LED and stent, which we'll focus in a few minutes. But the stent there in that uh, LPL. Uh, tight lesion right there. She so did a cutting balloon, Wolverine, uh, followed by uh, Promus, uh, the stent which was placed. Patient did fine, but more important was we needed to interrogate that LAD. And patient had a moderate plus anterior wall ischemia. So this way, the IVAS was done. After this is the final picture with the uh, Promus Elite. And uh, now this IVAS picture, and we're going to show this is the IVAS. IVAS pullback. And uh, Anu and Kiski will comment on it. Patient had two layers of ISR approximately, had a bare metal, and then had a cipher, 3.518 uh, and so. And you can see when it is pulled back that there is a calcium, be looks like behind the stent, although very tough to say, but within the stent, there is a calcific neoatherosclerosis. Why? Because you see the stent border in the yellow, and then you see uh, the, uh, the atheroma. Uh, you know, classical over three layer of uh, atheroma uh, within the stent struts. And uh, calcium has been shown uh, within the inside the stent. And on the right side, you see some calcified stent under expansion as well as the calcium. So both these are imaging expert, Anu and Kiski, want to comment on this? Yeah, I think uh, since, uh, you know, the stent was way back, and we have been seeing this also. We actually have our publication as a neoatherosclerosis. Um, you know, what, what we uh, actually saw, our publication was both based on IVAS as well as uh, 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 infrared X. 
where we even showed this new atherosclerosis you will start seeing some uh, lipid deposition but here um, if, this is what we will see with IVUS and if you sh show next you s we predict this is what uh, Kiski actually predicts that when we do OCT this is what we will find later today that you see the stent and you have neo plus lot of calcium within that uh, neo those yellow which is uh, uh, at the level A and at the level uh, B is some under expansion but lot of it is uh, calcium there yeah so very interesting this is these two pictures uh, don't belong to this patient no, but yeah. but it's a projection that this that, is what we will find yeah because I was there is no shadow behind the calcium so there is always a speculation what is there depth of the calcium cannot be measured although I'll show you the data of the IVAS versus OCT very interesting uh, uh, and uh, how the what is the use of IVAS versus OCT in America uh, but maybe you know some people in the place in the country may be different but look at the nice calcium on the OCT and the same thing you can see on IVAS and uh, so some people say well you know what uh, unless you say that OCT is superior to IVAS, I'll just go with the IVAS. And that is what uh, being done at present by many, many people uh, that uh, keep OCT, maybe some cases of uh, stent under expansion or uh, uh, try to see uh, endothelization. But otherwise, IVAS is 3 to 1. It wins by 3 to 1 ratio uh, of use in America. Uh, I was 75% and OCT 25%. And what do you say about uh, use of knowing that you have done both quite a bit now with various trials and so the use of I was versus OCT? No, yes, OCT has uh, definitely certain uh, uh, clear indications. Like here, you see that clear demarcation of uh, because of the depth of penetration, clear demarcation of the calcium. You really want to understand how, you know, what the amount of calcium. Um, the arc, the depth, the length and all that, I think OCT definitely uh, does a better delineation uh, compared to IVAS. But, um, you know, if you're doing multiple runs um, and if uh, people just keep using it, nothing wrong in saying that, okay, I just want to train with IVAS. But definitely when you are treating all this kind to understand the mechanism and all that, probably OCT uh, defines it better. And that is why, uh, uh, Samir, when we did the initial announcement last week, we had done the IVAS already, which we have shown you now. The, we, we changed our announcement that now we'll do this case OCT guided. Because I think it's a reasonable case to show what does it look by OCT and we already have the IVAS picture. And of course, our fellows, they got ready, uh, you know, the OCT and uh, we have Vandar Panta and Frank uh, uh, Kala, uh, Kalaba. Uh, our two, uh, our international fellows and then Manish is the super fellow, uh, all are ready uh, for this particular case to show. And for me, actually, it's a lot of learning. We're learning imaging. You know, we are days of uh, giants. We just looked into the angiogram and be happy. But I think that uh, concept is being uh, challenged by many, many people and many, many trials. So I think we're changing a little bit. Uh, so, uh, but uh, Sinai also, the number is, covering, sorry, it has co crossed the teens now, like 20, 21 uh, percent cases being done with the imaging. And of course, the role of imaging, basically from our point of view, is the end. So we very rarely define the plaque, like this case is different. We'll define the plaque based on the imaging, but we'll do in the end for optimization. And that's where the real value, in my opinion, of the imaging comes. Uh, but this case is different. Here we need to understand the mechanism. Patient has ischemia. On the angiogram, you say, well, you know what? It doesn't look too bad. But this patient is, continues to be symptomatic despite that LPLPCI. And uh, we, clearly because of this LAD. And uh, you see the lumen actually in the IVAS. Uh, one area lumen was 2.5. So it's a very significant. Anything uh, less than 3 is significant. They say between 3 and 4. If your plaque burden is more than 70% is significant. Uh, so that basically uh, is, I would call this case is a significant. Now, only question is, yeah, what well, Anno is doing a very gutsy, going with the rotablator wire directly. Uh, but, but, you know, this calcific di disease uh, within the stent, although it looks it's, uh, simpler, can go, but it definitely will be a little challenging. We go back to the floor, please. While wire is being uh, sent. Samin, I yeah. completely concur with you. I think the real teaching value of this case is going to be imaging. Yeah. And uh, particularly because we have both uh, a previous IVAS and now let's see how it looks under OCT. And, but beyond that, looks a classical case for IVL. Yeah. 
There is a question by Dr. Mahmood El Rais. Is it hmm. calcified nodule? You've kind of answered it, but uh, uh, tell us more, Kiski. Yeah, so the, there was a very small calcific nodule earlier, but uh, on the eye was right. What yeah, do you think? So, yeah, like uh, if it's a protruding inside the lumen, it's going to be, we can call it a nodule. So but we can, let's see the OCT. So therefore, within the neoatherosclerosis, there is a calcific nodule. Although there was a paper just came out in the JAK, one case report by Ajay Kirtani, and so that single uh, calcific nodule keep protruding through the stent struts. Uh, based on the OCT and so. So let me complete my quick presentation. Uh, let's go back to presentation while they are ready to get the OCT. As you see, uh, new advanced the rotor wire and doing the OCT on this. So the plan today is uh, the basically now stage PCI the calcified under expanded LED due to ISR using rotor tripsy and the mini crush stenting with the OCT guidance. Now appropriate now point of view. Uh, clearly, this patient will, it's a proximal LED, proximal to mid LED, uh, and uh, patient has a positive stress test on double anti uh, ischemic therapy, so it's absolutely appropriate. So, we can go back now to the live imaging of the OCT. And let's see, I'll go back to that picture after we acquire that what uh, Kiski predicted we are going to see today. So I think we are getting the second lesion also, Kiski. Yep. Right, I'm yep. going to do it myself. Okay? But second lesion was no disease, in, you know, no, angiography. No, no, but what I meant is yeah. if OCT can take yeah. care of it, I would want to see what it looks like. Oh, it didn't, didn't connect. Okay. Yeah. Could you check the path? And very important, we used to worry about the fibrillation and so, but now we got a randomized trial of three, 4,000 patients in last few weeks, and there was no V-fib. So I think uh, I know we can get away from because we always used to have a person at the pedal uh, with the, like you know pedals in case it goes in V fib. But I think the techniques is the way we are doing now. There is no uh, no longer fibrillation. There is not even a single episode in 3,000 plus randomized patients. Yep. Like okay, clear. Yeah. You are good. Yep. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, beautiful image. Good. As long as Kiski Kis is happy with the image. 1.75 bar, right? Yeah, we have a two. Two, oh, okay, good. Yeah, one better. One, yeah. one column calls him, but not so much. This is a mid stand. Now coming to the gap. And this is a proximal LED. Yeah, I see a lot of calls him inside a stand. So, first, can I do the collation? One second, please. Works. Okay, accept. It's coming out. What clot? Mm. Why? Yeah. I so I will show you the like proximal LED lesion. So this yeah, is a two. gap of the uh, tube uh, stand. Uh, this is the distal edge of the old stand. So you see this like sharp order, like plus signal. Ah. This is a calcium inside wow. inside a stand, and you see the strut behind the uh, calcium. You. You so predicted a, that exactly, yeah. Yeah, this is the stent yeah, is expanded. This is, it, this is a yeah. biological a different one, yeah. neoacidosclerosis. Yeah. And uh, this is come to the proximal. Okay, I see some like uh, intimal rupture. And uh, this is also cause them uh, inside a stent. Where is your uh, curse? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, this is also That's the what exactly yeah, he had yeah, earlier, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so it looks like through the, vest, uh, through the ISL lesion, uh, mostly the uh, neoacidosclerosis, the calcium is inside. Okay. And you yeah. see here is a two layer of one and two. And, and now the, where is that calcific nodule which you predicted on the IVAS? Where do we, do we see somewhere? Yeah, it should be at that level, before okay. that diagonal, yeah. So actually this is Yeah, not, right there, you went past, by no? No, no. But not like a clearly. It's, no, no, it's small. No, really. it's not a clear nodule, but there's a disruption. Remember I just said SS, I caught little yeah. thrombus out. <laughs> I think it could yeah. be from the disrupted area. Okay, so we have a 2 -0. Yeah, we have a 2 bar. Uh, Kiski, yes. give me the diameter at the highest uh, calcium. Even you the, not that. Okay, so best cell size is 4 low. Okay, good. Three and a tightest part yeah. like MLD. Okay. Like, not there, okay. where the calcium is. Uh, 1.7. The MLD is like 1.4 or something. Uh, yeah. Okay, there, 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 right there, right there. Surprised yeah. with the choice of 2.0, but completely agree. 
makes sense yeah yeah but yeah. see where where we want to really take care of the calcium it's still diameter is 2.2 yeah true yeah mm. okay let's see and it was same it was like 2.3 uh, sorry 2.5 on ivers and remember the data have shown there is about a 1 mm difference uh but the what we acquire in the ivers versus oct our criteria is little different between two of them i know the uh, you know the instant segment is clearly protected 2o makes sense there but you would not take the 2o down all the way to the no, we'll second leave region, would you no no no, yeah. no. But, i think at the level of the diag we are going yeah. to stop there okay. yeah. and, and second region angiographically you no know, what was the mld of the second region sure, because second. on the i was i don't think we did i was of the second region no we never did yeah because here he also very good lumen for the second region uh, kiski what is the lumen there like 1.8 Oh, one point eight only. Second region, millimeter. Oh. Yeah, and uh, look, in, in the proximal LED, there is also the uh, lipid inside the stent. This is also we call. There is a know, lipid also. Process. Wow. Yeah. So that's sure. why it's a, like a disruption of the intima. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, that one. Wow. There is a plaque rupture. That's why the thrombus came. Yes. You know, on the wire, despite the good ACT of three sixty seven, and patient is on angiomax. Uh, but that there was a clot on the wire, so I think it's probably the thrombus from there. Yeah. So we'll be chances for slow flow. Make sure you're ready with the verapamil and nitroprusside. Okay, let's go. Sounds good. Okay, good. Okay. Good. Okay, going, going with the two O. Let's go. Now, uh, full back. Samir mm -hmm. had the question that uh, this would have been an ideal case for IVL. Yeah. Versus we have. Yeah, I would say that one of the region because we saw there is a lot of uh, calcium inside also neoatherosclerosis, and so we thought let's shave a little bit, and then we do the IVL. So go goal is to combine IVL 3.5 ready, right? Yeah, four IVL. Wow. But if, if yeah, four O because we need uh, the diameter is four O there. Okay. If somebody says I just want to do IVL, yeah. I think it's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yep. So we just have to be clear with that. Good. Okay, off. Good. Okay, didn't jump, and now we are ready to rock and roll. Hmm. All right, went yeah, right through yeah, the entire yeah, uh, yeah. instant segment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Samin, what is the speed uh, that the question? One fifty, one hundred fifty thousand RPM. And remember, I told everyone that Rota Pro, which is the Rota Pro two now, it comes set with the company. You don't even have to touch the tachometer. No speed check. Yeah, no speed check. It comes with a one fifty five set. Ready? From the company. If you want to go higher, lower, this is a different story, but not needed anything. Get me the run through wire with the curve. So, but we do with the 150, but just to be okay. fair, there was a trial of 100 patients from Japan. They compare 140,000 to 180,000 RPM, and there was no difference in slow flow or CK release. So, yes, we do 150,000, but our personal experience has been that it caused less slow flow, less CK release, because that's what the, we felt early. Actually, I did the uh, in vitro experiment with the 140,000 back in the Barry Kohler's day with the Marlene William was my fellow, and we saw that less platelet activation at 140,000 versus 180,000, and that was totally inhibited by Epsiximab. But those those were the, we did in vitro experiments. So therefore, that is what we have done. Uh, that low speed and we actually found when we went to low speed in early 2000, we started seeing the lower uh, slow flow, little less chest pain uh, and so. Yeah, what do you need now? They give there me the wire without a wire introducer. Several <laughs> questions. Uh, yeah. You already answered them regarding the we need to speed. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and Three also, you've you. kind of talked about it, but there is a, a direct question. If there is thrombus, uh, would you still go with rotablator? Yeah. Very, very good point. Absolutely. When I was saying that, I was thinking that in my mind, because we teach everyone that don't use uh, uh, the rota when there is a thrombotic lesion. So this case, I think it's a little plaque disruption that was in the distal segment. Uh, so, yes, in the thrombotic lesion, absolutely good point. Where is the uh, Verapamil? Yeah. 
uh, that uh, we avoid uh, should not use the rotablation in those cases. Absolutely, po good point. Yeah, four already. But it was just a very, but biggest issue was the underexpanded stent in this case. So I think it came up on the wire. Now the question is, did it come from the west, from the rest of the vessel itself versus the distal? Let's take a picture after rotor. No, no. No? Okay. Give me the OCT. Okay. We are going to do OCT. Bring it closer. Remove the rotor. Throw it out. You want to use the guide liner and just inject by hand? Let's use a quick guide liner. For what? Inject because otherwise you have to change the directions. I don't understand. Why guide liner? For what? Eh? No, but otherwise you change this, you change that. And end up giving even more dye. So other question also, yeah, will show that data of various trials that OCT definitely use more dye versus your NGO guided or I was guided. Leave it like uh, that, okay. And uh, so the key is that if you to circumvent that, you can always use the guide liner or Godzilla and just inject a small amount there. And you still have a very good opacification for the OCT. So somebody very observant... Yeah. Uh, Atish Changwal, there is ST elevation now. Yeah. So as I'm saying, we needed to see. Remember, we expected this because of that little thrombotic. Uh, and uh, let's take a picture. Okay. Yeah, we definitely little ST. We just gave uh, some nipride. And uh, you did at the beginning, right? Yeah, we gave a little nipride. Extremely very good point. Very observant. good point. Yeah. Very Super. Yeah. Looks all right though. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Vessel is okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we can just no, need a little more. No distal embolization yeah. either. No. But there definitely a microembolization. There is a little ST elevation. Was so that you ST elevation the baseline? No. Yeah. No OCT. We do it. Yeah. Finish your OCT. Yeah. No, because flow is good. So there is uh, exactly anticipating uh, yeah. the question there. Good. Uh, are you going to do a OCT run here or I Yep, right here. No, OCT. Now, yeah, yeah, I was exactly. with it last time. Now, we, yeah, exactly. And then uh, we will do IVL, the West no, Climate. No, no. Is key ready? Yep. Yep, beautiful. Well, I think you disrupted a lot. Impact of uh, the two or rot rota burr on uh, this lesion. Yes. I don't think it did eh? much. So amazing transformation. I, you know, we used to initially get uh, almost all the questions on uh, uh, by email uh, through the website. Now everything yeah. is coming uh, on the chat lines. Oh, good. Everything is on chat. Beautiful, beautiful. I heard about, and STs uh, are going down. Questions all. Sure. Okay, but Lake, the, put the, the OCT on the main line. It could be because you were yeah, so too much. This is posted to a loader. So you see that, uh, just the surface of the car seems a little bit uh, shade, but this is also true. The MLD is like uh, not as tight. That's why, so no super aggressive uh, modification. Just the surface is a uh, shape. And uh, that, that's the uh, lipid connect. part is more okay, disrupted. Connect. That's why maybe kind of a uh, STL. That's why a little uh, yeah. uh, slow flow, yeah. So, I mean, there's also still thick calcium, but it's uh, like deeper size. So. But uh, is the calcium depth decreased now? No, uh, no. It just just, uh, just touched it. Yeah, true. Shaved it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We don't know. But you go back to the, okay, we are doing the uh, uh, IVL now. Let's go back to our NGO and show continue to show the ECG below. And you see that now ST has completely settled down because we. I remember I predicted that we gave verapamil and nitroprusside and the ECG completely normalized. Go back to the ECG, show the hemodynamics, let's do the IVL. We are ready with the IVL, 4 -0. So, Kiski, uh, yep. where, so you see two diagonals, right? So, I will yeah, start yeah. at the level of the second diagonal, okay? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the last stent end just on the second diagonal. Like well, uh, why I don't half, see half you. you didn't do courage? I don't see it. Okay, one second. Do the courage quickly. And this is a new C2 device which has 120 pulses. 
How many of those have you used already, these cases? Oh, yeah, so now actually we have used a handful, right? We are kept, everyone is 120 now? No, because yeah, the old, old one, once we finish, that, yeah. Is the uh, price, but, price the same for the same? test? Yeah, yes. Yeah, same. And that's why actually the, this uh, Indian guys use the first time. Uh, more, you know, even than anybody else. Uh, and uh, that's very good because there are a lot of calcific vessel and 120 k very handy. Uh, and absolutely. we know that, uh, yep. Yeah. More, more value for the money. Yeah. Keep coming down to the second diagonal. Okay, so I don't need anything there. So just in the come proximal, yeah, yeah. proximal, proximal, proximal. So, yeah, and this is the end of the old stand. Okay, yeah. okay. That's where so you I need, need that. Okay. Yeah. If we go a little bit distal. No, no, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go there. Is he not, we are not seeing that image. Okay. Okay, go up here. Yeah, yeah. okay, go up. Four atmosphere. Yeah. This is a four oh. Four oh. Four, four oh at four. IDL. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now wait, well let me see. Expand it there. It's still no, there's no, a little no, dent no, in the middle. A, a little bit, yeah. But expanded quite a bell compared to what aspect. was. Yeah. Yeah. Six and down. Go six. And down. Okay, we are going to do again same. Wait, if it is like yeah. yeah, yeah, so I'm fine. Okay, go up again. So this is the second train now? Yeah, second, second cycle, yeah. We may have STs, see the STs again. So we can't leave it for long. Six and down, and let it reperfuse. Yeah. Would it even uh, help uh, slightly actually backing the guide? Yeah, that's also that's good. Also okay, good. go up again. Yeah, go and then we'll back the guide. Yeah. Should we go to six now? Mm. So next one we'll do a six and eight. So you can go up to six only. So they allowed not more than to go six, and of course uh, before deflating you go to eight. Uh, I'm in two atmosphere more. Okay, down. Down. So this one was yes. four. Yeah. Oh, it didn't go Slight up. Slight indentation on the superior It's still there. Aspect. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. Is that the plane where uh, Kiski the calcification was? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Six. Right there. Right there. Exactly. Okay. Six. In the first so part the... of the stent. In first part of the stent, there is a that double layer. Uh, you see, they're still there. So many investigators talk about uh, virtually having the calcification melt. Yeah. So let's let's see what is the response yep. here. All we have done the four runs. Yeah. I think the we should multi stop. Right. Stent, I think. One, uh, one millimeter further. Two millimeter further. Go. One more. Yeah. Much. So we're going to uh, now. Do you want to plan to image again? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to image. All again. right. Have image the OCT again. ready. Yep. Good. Okay. Go up again. This is number five. Four or five. Yeah, number five. Five, yep. You see that? Yeah, still it's doing nothing. The, yeah. Mm. Nah. The... Nothing after this sit down. Okay. Good. Now I want to but say can, make no, sure no, that no. we do the proximal edge uh, with the stand boost. No, see proximal no, no, edge. No, Should no, we no, do stand uh, boost? Uh, it might have dissected the LED already. Box. Okay, go up. Die staining. Yeah. Four of maybe are too big hmm? there. Section with this um, balloon. Yep. This is okay. Hmm. Good. Negative. Okay. Let's come back in the guide. We see it. So this is the. Then take a picture before going in. <laughs> what do you want to do? Ready? Take a scene here. Mm, see? Okay. Every time we touch the vessel, there's slow flow. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. But that's okay. I think we are okay now. or something. Leave it. Time, time for more uh, nitride. Yeah. FFR. Small? Okay, leave it. Okay, balloon, okay. Balloon, 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 yeah. balloon. Yeah. So now question is, what is the mechanism? What is happening behind, before the diagonal? There is little diastasis. Is it just a calcium? The diastase, the, you know, it's like type 1 type, uh, uh, I mean, basically NHLBI A or B. Uh, 
uh, or little hematoma, which is unlikely because that's all within the stent and so. Uh, I mean, you want to do IVAS on this or we just go ahead and open the ostium of the diagonal now? Play. No, no. So even the pulley OCT, it shows the eccentric calcium. So it, it, it could possible just a stain of the calcium. Yeah. It's stain of the calcium. Hmm. I think IVL we are done. IVL Look at done. the proximal segment has done a tremendous not. job. Look at the proximal. No, proximal was not a lot. Highest was here. Let's take it out. I don't think it did anything. Yeah. Let's just uh, do another OCT run. Kiski, another OCT? Yeah, sounds good. Good. After that, uh, we will decide. Just then, SS, if you want, we can keep that uh, diet the because then it will be a third layer good there. Good news is that the ST segments are normal. Resolved again. Yeah. 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 I think it's very See, responsive this is to night thing pipe. about IVL when you're doing in the proximal segment, left main and all that. You so, definitely will see this kind of ST elevations. Yeah. Mm. So, Another excellent quick. question from uh, Dr. Mahmood L. Rice. I also mm. even asked him where is he located and he mentioned uh, Egypt. I am pretty Beautiful. sure it would be Cairo. His question is what about 2B3A? Yeah, so very good point. Uh, I would say, you know, probably I'm the only one user of 2B3A in our lab. Now here well, people start using you, more. I known yeah. you to be using it for 30 years now. Yeah, so now uh, there's a lot of people now go with IV Kangrelor. Uh, but I would say that this is the kind of case, maybe get a one or two bolus of uh, integralin. integralin yeah. Get integralin boluses, yeah. No, he has been on Plavix with a PRE of 198. But that's okay. But right now, everything is different. Now, you have uh, totally stimulated the platelets, very activated right now because of uh, the disruption we have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes, baseline was good, but now it's, everything is disrupted. This is going to be extremely useful, the uh, OCT here. Yep, OCT run three. Yeah, I think uh, we'll have some thrombus there. Stop re-disconnecting multiple times. Leave it like that, okay? Because air. Okay, Kiski, ready? Yep, ready. Good queries. Can you show the OCT on the screen? Show the OCT. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. A second. So this is the gap. Now come to plaque LED. Yeah. Mm. More no dilated. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a great plaque modification. Yeah. I'm giving get integral bolus. You give one. Yeah. Not now at the end, please. No, but you're developing thrombus now. We are definitely very active plaque. Maybe give heparin rather than angiomax. Okay, give heparin. Give 3,000 of heparin. Every time. Heparin. Yep. 3, Did we have, we don't have an ACT. Do you have a vein? Oh. Yeah, so Dr. Kinney. You checked one. Okay, ACT is 400. So it cannot be 3,000 heparin. So I did a bit, right? first. 2,000 probably, okay. Yeah, give 2,000 heparin, yeah. yeah okay. I saw the calcium flux here in the deep calcium. Looking good. Yeah. yeah. Show, yeah, show the, the OCT. Yeah, one second. So now I do the correlation. Show OCT on the main screen. Actually, even angiographically looks looking better. Yeah, better. Yeah. So okay, Kiski, tell us the teachers what you see now. Yeah. So this is the distal part of the proximal stand. You see that like uh, not a super huge, but uh, there is a calcium fracture. The wow. ideal work. Nice the calcium calc fracture. Yeah. And we go back to the proximal part, like a bigger lumen, more disrupted, but lumen is much bigger. So neuroacidosclerosis means a mix of the lipid and the calcium. So now it's more disrupted, more lumen, and the calcium is fractured. So this is a perfect, uh, like more than loader. IBL did work more than. No, that because we have the big balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Sizing Good. and the device is great. I think it's a time to put a stent, right? Yeah, I think no, no, so. no, do the side branch. We <laughs> taught people we are taking care of the side branch. Hello. We go by what the there books. Are the three layers. It'll It'll do the same thing, whether we do it now or after. Huh? Where is the needle introducer again? Yeah. So, and the, we need a 2.5 uh, compliant balloon first? Or 2 -0? Yeah, 2 or 12 compliant first. Okay, so 4 or 28? Yeah, we'll yeah. cover the proximal part. Okay. Like normal to normal. Okay. 
So now we are salvaging the diagonal, good size diagonal, I would say 2.25 millimeter. What wire is this? This is the fielder wire, a regular fielder, going through the two layers of the stent for the diagonal. And there's calcium there, yeah. so I don't know. Uh, let's see. I thought your first wire would be a whisper here. But... Hmm. There we go, almost there. It's a very angulated, see that it goes up, uh, could require angulated catheter. Uh, more, more shape with the wire. Good. Okay. Now, cut the balloon, yeah. Good. Cut the balloon. Excellent job. So basically what you mentioned, the whisper fielder, so we definitely go with the fielder as a first line or the mm -hmm. side branch. If there is a dissection, then we go with the whisper. Whisper actually somehow in the dissection find those channels in the intimal space and go to the main lumen. Uh, so those uh, will prefer whisper uh, and otherwise uh, we to give it a first try with the fielder. So again, but this is a, so you have to use a hydrophilic wire, whether whisper or fielder, whatever you are. I, I tell people that just become mastery in it. Just use one wire. Get a 2.512 high pressure also. So more questions coming. Uh, yeah. What is going to be the Strategy okay, here, done. a stent in stent, a DCB or brachytherapy? Yeah, very so important. Brachy therapy is out, of course. Is out. Yeah, because and DCB is out because DCB is only in the trial at present in America. Compared to United, you know, outside they can use DCB, we cannot. Uh, so, and then this is the case. You have to put a second stent. So our plan here is to do a, a, the mini crush. Yes, yes, I would leave it alone. What? Mini crush, that's what we said. In the diagonal, 2.25 or 2.5 and 4 in the LED. So this is where the whole plan was. Let's open the ostium a little more. Uh, that we want to keep the diagonal. So it's a good, very good size diagonal. So DC, IVS, the IVBT is out, DCB is out in America. We actually, there are a lot of trials going on. We are part of the solution, IDE, uh, where ISR, uh, they gave us a limit of one, th you know, 35 patients, which we have completed. We are asking them to do more. Uh, and uh, we may do more because 250 patient trial, uh, they are to about 170 only. Uh, they give us a little more. We can finish the trial in next one month. Then we go to the native vessel and bifurcation. Okay, give the stents. Yeah, 2.2512 and uh, 428, uh, right? Yeah. Kiski, yep. angiographically we are doing that. Are you agreeing with the imaging? Yeah, yeah I agree. 428 is perfect based on OCD. Good. Okay, go up with the thing. Yeah, that's good. Why well, don't go further because that's going no. to rupture it. Yeah. This okay? okay go. Yeah, go up. 10, 12, 14, 16. Down, down, down. Negative. Good. Done. I mean, what the nonsense. Okay, go up here. Go now up here. You go. Yeah. Why you got that high pressure in there? Okay. And in order to go through the stent starts, if you're applying the stent, uh, through the starts, make sure you go at least 16 atmosphere. Uh, otherwise, your strut will not open to accommodate this. The, take a picture. And now you decide, you know, diagonal more and more I'm looking at it. I think the whole goal here is the uh, case of uh, uh, the, the LED. Diagonal looks good. You want not to put a stent. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but you went such high pressure. Yeah, but that's okay. So what? But it's, so I think we can still put a short stent. Yeah. Everything looking good. That go with the plan. That was your original plan was the mini crush after uh, low, rotatripsy. And we are so far following the same steps. So, Samin, another set of yeah. uh, very interesting questions regarding the strut thickness in multi-layered stenting and that uh, 
would a thin strut, something like uh, Orsero, be preferable? Uh, well, I mean, that's a very good point. So question is now, uh, to whatever the extent was, now we have eliminated uh, of the factor. So it is out of the factor now. So what would you do? The Orsero or the Synergy with a very thin strut. We actually looking at our data in the rotablation, and this is the kind of case that is difference in the strut thickness outcome with thin strut, which we actually majority we are uh, synergy or zero is only 5%, 95% is the synergy at Sinai versus Promus uh, and uh, Zions, which is the thicker strut. Uh, nothing is thick, but thicker strut is their uh, outcome. When we did the overall trial, I mean, overall our data we published, there was no difference we saw. But now we want to go with the patient only where we did uh, rotation atherectomy uh, and uh, to, in those cases. So we are evaluating it. So now question comes here that is there a difference uh, between two strut techniques, uh, thickness? So I don't know. But I know that uh, Orsiro is the only stent which have uh, done the better outcome uh, compared to uh, in the bioflow trials and so uh, compared to uh, Zions. Uh, and the, some in the complex cases, the data are not that clear. Uh, and, uh, uh, and same, uh, the, whether it could be Onyx also, also relatively thin strut, but both uh, on the Orsiro and uh, Synergy, around 60 uh, micron. Uh, will have a totally thin strut. So I'm actually a little more concerned uh, about the thin strut uh, stent in a calcific lesion uh, because uh, ability to have that radial the strength which you need. Problem with the 4 stent. Huh? Yeah. Hmm? 4 stent would not go. Not going? No. no, it will go. So what will happen is the, you, we can take out, uh, we have to rewire because there's probably a mixing. No, I don't think so. No, 4 and 2.5 will go. No, no. So we can pull back. So let's see. Uh, what I would say I is, would no, not do it. you have to pull back the wire completely out at area where it is, where it is combining. No, below. Somewhere in the guide. Even further there. down. Huh? Where it's is it? Up there, see there. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere here. So no, what we'll do is see here now. We have to pull back the wire at this level. Let's keep showing our audience. You know, when there is a crisscross, pull back your wire up to the tip. We are pulling because we can go back into the LED again. So see this now. So good. So now advance the stent itself, not the wire. Advance the stent. It's not going to do that. Good. See that now? When there is a crisscross, that's what you do. You bring back the wire at the ostium of the uh, stent and uh, then advance the stent a little bit forward. And that will take care of it. So this is not uncommon because multiple wiring and so and so forth that we are a little bit of crisscross and uh, we are now ready to uh, do it. So answer to crisscross, bring back the wire at the level where there is a difference yeah, and then advance cannot, the stent a little bit. there is a stent, yeah. if you have LED dissection, yeah. you cannot do that. Yeah. Now, if there is a dissection, yeah. then definitely uh, in that case, I would take the diagonal stent and balloon out, I mean stent no, no, wire no, 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 and then go. No, just yeah. to stop crush and be done. Yeah. Because it was not easy when yeah. you were giving your lecture, yeah. it was not easy to cross yeah, I saw that. the diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. what they need to learn also, how to get the stent into the diagostium. Okay. The wire, you need a little body of the wire, you advance and then no, go no, back no, again. Okay, yeah. no, you yeah. re reorient yeah. the yeah. whole thing. Think, so. yes. Good. Now, let's see now. Uh, the You need to bring back the diagonal a little bit. Ready? Take a picture. Do you want to pull back the LED a little back? Let's see. Okay. Some okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, diagonal go has diagonal. come back too much in. Huh? Diagonal has come back too much in. No, we are okay. Go. We may miss the Austin, okay. No? Good. Then fine. Then go. Up. Okay. Going go up. Up with the diag. Diag. Yeah. Twelve. Twelve. Fourteen. Fourteen. Good. Down. Down. Look at the angle of the diagonal. <laughs> 14, 16, yeah, negative. Good. And go up here.
Mm. In case you are to use later on, go here. Twenty. You can go here. Twenty. This is not in the app. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Twenty. Down. No, but this was angulated, so we needed a little modification of app teaching. Good. Take the wire out, but leave the wire in the vessel. Okay. Take a picture. Sir. Andrew, hope you are watching the step. Ready? Next modification in the app. Okay, some die, so we confirm everything is good. Yes. Okay, yeah. go up. Go. Fourteen. Okay, good. Down. Nice. Go up again. Okay. Down. You want to go few millimeter distal? There's no stand there. You need it. Okay. Okay. Let's take a picture and then have a study, and we'll meanwhile go with our uh, start your lecture. theoretical lectures. So you'll tell us what you are going to do, and then you'll come back when you're doing the final uh, OCT run. Okay. Oh, both the wires came out. But one second, let me give a little uh, video dilators. This artery needs some video dilator. STs are good. You can see the hemodynamics. Yeah. Yeah. No STs. Good. Let's take a picture. Sine. Beautiful. Good. Okay. See, Tell that, us the plan that, and we'll go off uh, we'll line few minutes. We'll do a kissing and then we'll do OCT. Okay. But that uh, calcium. It's the same. <laughs> no, a little bit behind, but uh, as long as lumen is very good. So I always say that don't be too crazy. You got a good lumen. Uh, in this particular case, not 5.5, .5, about uh, 7 and so. You buy the diagonal and then we'll uh, go and show. Uh, you have to do a kissing balloon inflation here. Yeah. Uh, get from somebody, which they can use. Uh, 2 or 12, yeah. same. We had 2 or 12 good. anyway, yeah. So uh, wiring and then we'll go our... Uh, uh, lecture and your plan is 4-0 in the LED, what you are going to do? We have 2.25 uh, balloon for the diagonal, which we already have. 2 and 2.25, one is the first, uh, use the compliant. Uh, it will be a little difficult to go into it now because there is a little crush line you can see. Calcium, Calcium also. Calcium, crush, a yeah. lot of things. You yeah. have to, may take a while. Okay, start your lecture. And, uh, to Okay, so plan would be kissing and then do the OCT. And that's what we are going to show uh, in next uh, for 10 minutes. Okay, let's go to our presentation. Uh, and yeah, we make a little curve. And actually, uh, 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 as I mentioned, uh, Joe Sweeney, uh, my associate has also joined here. Uh, come... Uh, You be on the camera, right? So Joe has joined here. Samir, we are going to go back our presentation while the work being done with the uh, uh, balloon of the side branch. So we have done the complex uh, uh, rotor tripsy of the LED followed by mini crash. So that's where we're going to talk about international imaging trials. Lot came out in the European society. And then we'll talk about the our focus review of the month on the latest paper, which uh, Joe Sweeney is the uh, one of the main author in this patient, where, uh, in this uh, publication, which is a microvascular network, MVN, in United States have been made, uh, comprehensive management of uh, uh, ANOCA, uh, basically uh, part one and part two, with their definition, patient population, diagnosis, program development, treatment and research initiative, which is angina we have so many times with a non-obstructive coronary artery disease. So from the trials point of view, I'll just go a little fast. One is the ILUMEN trial done majority in the United States, although it was global trial, uh, and, and basically show, can take the patient with a complex PCR, complex CAD and diabetic, randomized 1147 to OCT and 1200 to uh, angiography, although in angiography all, arm also, they did the blinded OCT. Okay, but basically uh, the trial of uh, 42400, the 
qualifying characteristics be this was supposed to be the trial of a complex patient so diabetic i don't know whether complex uh, point of view and long and multiple lesions were present in about two third others were non stemy but real complexity we know is the calcification and bifurcation as you saw that was in a small number of cases so it was there but i would say lesion complexity point of view probably was present in 20% of patients total uh, and then basically what we found the oct you have more procedure high duration higher fluoroscopy higher radiation and higher contrast volume so uh, you can see the ngo did very good from the procedural point of view rest of the parameters were not different and then yes what it was one of the primary end point was imaging your final post pci minimum stent area by oct it was higher 5.72 with the oct ngo was 5.36 with a p value of 0.001 so clearly uh, better lumen after the procedure uh, in the lab so question is uh, yeah that looks good but did it translate into anything a follow up and answer to that is absolutely no at 2 years target vessel failure which we know that cardiac death mi and ischemia driven revascularization did occur in 7.4% of the oct group 8.2 of the angiographic group group p value of 0.45 individual end points are here only one uh, i would say positive uh, point was stent thrombosis was 0.5 in the oct guidance and 1.4 in the uh, angiographic guidance so long term data the tvf no different but lower stent thrombosis as shown here then the other trial from denmark and the from europe by uh, home and Christ christiansen group called october trial took the patient complex bifurcation lesion why they call complex that all the cases they used the two vessel in the two you know both main vessel and side branch intervention oct guidance was the angiography guidance of about 1200 patient with the primary end point these were the main vessel more than 2.75 side branch more than 2.5 had a 50% stenosis and you supposed to take care of both the uh, vessels main vessel as well as side branch and these are the individual point you can see here uh, and uh, more important that uh, overall outcome point of view same their primary outcome of the mace the death target lesion mi or ischemia driven tlr 14 uh, percent occurred in the ngo guided oct guided 10.1 clearly 4 percent lower in the oct made a p value of 0.035 the individual end points of the point as you can see here the if you take others death target lesion mi ischemia driven even stent thrombosis p value was not different they barely made it you see the odd ratio 0.50 to 0.98 the barely made it but yes oct guided was better compared to ngo guided in the bifurcation lesion with the october trial now one very other interesting observation came so these are the individual end point sub group which was shown beforehand there not much difference except in the last group uh, which is the the a uh, patient with the oct uh, let me just see a uh, previous slide yeah uh, that uh, you know we old uh, guide was that whether oct is better versus angiography better based on the syntax score as you can see here there was no clear cut difference um, and uh, the showed that oct is better than angiography in patient with a complex coronary bifurcation then uh, dr greg stone our uh, academic uh, director here at mount sinai amount and i heart showed the real time updated network meta an analysis using both these trials october as well as uh, the illumian he included in his trial and these were the oct versus i was 20 randomized trial as you can see in various groups ngo versus oct ngo versus i was i was versus oct all of them the multiple trials of the 20 randomized trial used in the, this is analysis and the names are clearly written there and including the two latest one of the element 4 and october and all of them showed that if you take a target lesion failure superiority of the intravascular imaging uh, guidance pci by reducing the event rate by 31% confidence interval of 0.61 to 0.78 taking all the trials together very interesting so now if you take a individual end point of the cardiac death or all cause death again superior uh, with the imaging then you take a mi one is the target vessel mi or all mi again superior in both the in, in from the imaging point of view and then you take stent thrombosis 
the stent thrombosis actually decreased 50 percent by imaging guided if you take all of them together and the TLR decreased by 29 percent. So basically to, you can say roughly stent thrombosis become half and target lesion failure becomes uh, decreased by one third uh, in the imaging guided PCI. Now then question was that uh, if you take put together like, you know here we have put all of them uh, all factors called OCTI was together versus angiographic each group of the TLF stent thrombosis all cause death MI and TVR very simple very clear message for the stent thrombosis become by half and is the decrease death by 25 percent and your TVR by 30 percent so that's the team to remember 25 percent decrease in death 30 percent decrease in TVR and 50% decrease in stent thrombosis by the imaging in this meta-analysis. Now, which one is better, OCT or IVAS? Actually, if you look at it, identical, except the TVR, there is a little signal that may be that also the IVAS may be slightly better compared to OCT, as you can see here in the trial, 1.36. So maybe the TVR was slightly better in these trials uh, if you take compare OCT versus IVAS guided uh, and so so conclusion basically was that compared with angiographic guided PCI, IVR guided, I've already mentioned, the TLF 30%, 46%, uh, and 29% with the death, MI, and TLR respectively. Most important is the stent thrombosis, and uh, clearly there was similar outcome with the OCT versus IVR guided PCI. Then you say, well, let's compare both of them. And this was not included in the trial. Oh, it was trial included in this? Octavus? No, no, no. Yeah, Octavus was not included in the beta analysis. Uh, and this is a trial done by South Korea uh, group comparing OCT versus IVAS in 2000 patients. They always do such a large studies on target vessel failure of the death, TLR and uh, TVR of the ischemia driven with a one year follow up. Included pa the patient basically, major, we all come are kind of. Uh, and uh, whether you uh, if some cases with a drug coated balloon also, but trial of the 1000 patient of the OCT, about 1000 for the IVAS follow up, uh, tremendous follow up. And basically, what we saw overall, not much difference except. Amount of contrast media used was higher in the OCT, which we'll expect. Uh, total PCI time was kind of equal, but this is slightly more on the IVAS compared to OCT. But the important point, imaging-based procedural success, that is basically how often your stent expanded. And so it was higher with the IVAS guidance versus OCT guidance. So you can say, although you look at the complication, no com almost no complication related to IVAS or OCT. Uh, that's what point I was making earlier that these imaging now the way we do have been kind of very safe. So, but uh, clearly that I was did a better job of the getting the procedural success uh, and individual also stent optimization, relative stent expansion. That you can see much higher in the I was group compared to OCT group. Now, <laughs> does it matter? We learned that in the um, Illumin trial, better lumen didn't make any difference, but. Overall, the data are that IVAS did better job as such from the imaging point parameters point of view compared to OCT. And but did it lead to any difference in the death, MI and uh, TVR? Answer is no. 3.1 versus 2.5. Absolutely no difference with the p-value, uh, non-inferiority and uh, confidence interval of 0.47 to 1.36. Hazard ratio. So whether you do a per protocol or as treated, no difference again. You take individual endpoints, no difference in the clinical factors, OCT versus IVAS. You say maybe one could be better in patient with a low ejection fraction, ACS, nope. The very important information we learned that once you have a syntax score based, that IVAS was better compared to OCT. You see that here. Uh, interaction or I mean trended towards I would not say significant but there was a trend towards better outcome in a complex cases using IVAS compared to OCT p-value of 0 0.096 for the interaction as you can see here uh, so individual endpoint of the death one year and two years no difference as shown here and it is published in circulation so clearly we have a lot of data about this subject and the comparative data of the OCT and IVAS you want to show your things first yeah, let's show what, no, you can show this. No, they, the, yep. the angiogram has been done. Show the angiogram now. Go back. Show yeah. the final angio. Yeah, right yeah, there. We just did the kissing. Yeah. Uh, did I have to show anything there? Yeah, go previous. Looks Hold excellent on. there. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, I wanted yeah. to show the wiring, right? Did yeah. I wire before you left? No. Okay. 
Yeah. Which uh, wire is this? The wire. This is this is the same filter. No, no. I think we did not. So this recross there. Yeah. 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 So here is the same. If somebody says because there are so many layers of stent, you want to do. uh you know post dilation and then cross it's okay but uh, we were able to cross without that um so you know all the theory whether you want to go to the proximal uh, uh cell distal cell in this kind of case will be very hard if you get through one cell you'll be happy um but the two o used balloon actually went can you believe that yeah i was ready for a um, anchor i was ready for one five balloon thinking it would not go but the used two five balloon went um and then we just did the kiss yeah then we went 25 went up to 20 atmosphere of that uh, diag mm -hmm. and then four oak everywhere yeah and this is where we are with the final the final oct will be shown this is the angiography final picture and let's yeah. uh, go to the oct kiss ki yep can show it on the screen yeah i'll show you so this is a from the distal this is a mid gap part so now yep. we see the distal edge of the stent yeah no dissection no normal opposition expanded well And I'll through the uh, stand, it expanded really well. Can you well. okay? For one, looks good at the bifurcation level. We want to okay, see I'll how show the, the stand bifurcation looks. level. So yeah, here is a uh, some clashed stand, but it looks like open. And actually, the through the stand, the MSA is like a eight point O. This is the tightest. Eight point four, beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the, you see the like crossing fracture behind the stand, so the idea works. So that's why the is expanded well. Can you show us the end with the stent image uh, on the OCT? Oh, sure. So we can see that uh, bird's eye view. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Not a not a not a not a dot. Yeah. Not a single dot of red. Look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> Do uh, show the 3D reconstruction so yes. we can see that uh, uh, stent side branch. Anu technically very well performed too. There was a question that did you consider using pot? before diagonal wiring yeah um we were thinking about it but remember our teaching is for a non left main it's not indicated but here okay. since uh, we have probably four layers at the layer of that uh, diag uh, we were in fact we did call for uh, the balloon to post dilate there but we we you saw that the wire uh, we were able to wire and get the uh, balloon through it so this is how it looks right the ostium yeah. Yeah, this is the ostium of the D2. Yes. Yeah, it looks open visually. Yeah. Okay. So, so question basically was that the pot might have been indicated by opening the strut if because this is now three or if four layers. Not wire. Because three yeah. layers the stent and there is a crushed stent of the diagonal. So four there is layers. a three to four, four to five layers. So therefore, maybe a pot could be indicated. But we actually have been a, a non-left main. We are not a proponent of pot. And more importantly. there is no clear data you will be seeing a paper from us in jack intervention which has been accepted coming out that pot being done but beside very few uh, the theory i am sorry very few data to support more of a personal opinion rather than the data to support the pot use in our interventional cardiology okay we can go back to you want to comment on last one on this so we go to the, our next part of the microvascular No, want to just from this point yeah no no i think we are good i think only point i will make if anybody ask a question did we need rota could we have just done with ivl we could have just done this with ivl yeah puri okay let's go to our presentation and this is the important one uh, after a long time uh, now just to complete actually for imaging we also this i showed earlier uh, that uh, from uh, jack we had the state of the art review the council recommendation at the operator level institutional level the national level because data have very pro imaging because it helps and now question comes what it is now in acc and cdr as of the last report of the fourth quarter of 2022 we have about uh, 22% of the pci done with the uh, imaging 75% is ivs 25% is oct and of course they have the pre intervention lesion preparation stent deployment to me assessment of the post procedure end point are the most important one and that leads to the outcome better outcome now come back to our uh, quickly the comprehensive management of the uh, Angina with a non-obstructive CAD with part one and two from the microvascular and uh, the network. So I'll ask uh, um, the Joe Sweeney uh, is one of the author on this. What tell us about this? What is the microvascular network? Yeah. Um, so thank you, SS. Great case. 
So the microvascular network was a, a group of physicians, like-minded physicians that were very interested in studying patients that had non-obstructive coronary disease that kept coming back to the medical care system for angina. Um, and it convened initially, the first meeting we had was in 2021, and we were charged with really standardizing policies and definitions uh, and starting to develop protocols where we can start studying these patients in uniformity, uh, but more importantly, develop um, data bank systems and uh, registries so that we can now start applying uh, uh, research questions and trials about treatment. Beautiful. Um, and it started out with 50 physicians across uh, the North America and has now extended over 100 physicians, I think on my last count, uh, worldwide. But the initial was a North American experience. Now, the word angina we use, which is the ENOCA, yeah. why this word is ENOCA? With ischemia has kind of fallen fallen off the waste basket. People don't use that. Excellent nowadays. question, and it's a big misnomer. So, ANOCA stands for angina with non-obstructive coronary disease. This is the cohort of patients we're targeting. While we like to see ischemia uh, on a non-invasive test, it is implied, and we know that a lot of times ischemia is not detected. And this goes back to the problem uh, challenge with this group of patients is identifying them is so difficult because the current guidelines are really based on identifying and working up patients with obstructive coronary disease. And those patients with non-obstructive coronary disease and still with angina have fallen through the cracks and the guidelines do not, do not address that. And that's why we got rid of the ischemic or INOCA and really focused on simplifying it with ANOCA, which is angina. So angina is the typical presenting symptoms. And actually, that's a very interesting point because remember the INOCA was part of the our uh, the ischemia trial. So I actually, by learning it, I just learned that INOCA for our audience is like gone. Don't use it. Right. Only ANOCA is the Only one. Anoka. It's yeah. implied. implied. Ischemia is implied. implied. And therefore, the key is the big challenge, as uh, Joe just pointed out. We always constructed on obstructive atherosclerotic disease, but now that this microvascular network will concentrate on this aspect. Patient keeps coming back, have chest pain, that, but your, your epicardial vessel is good. So we expect it's a microvascular dysfunction, what type it is, to whether endothelial, vagospasm, myocardial bridge, uh, chronic, you know, all these things which happens, even post stenting. How often we have seen patient? Yep. Perfect stent, keep coming back with a chest pain. We Correct. do FFR, IFR, they're normal. Uh, and so, so this is a true disease entity, uh, prevalence and epidemiology. It looks like every fourth case uh, could be with a chest pain syndrome, which we understand. Yeah, and, so, so just to comment yeah. on that, it's millions of, 10 million patients have angina, yeah. or 11 million patients yeah. we quote in the paper. Yeah. Up to 50% of those patients are going to have non-obstructive coronary disease right. on coronary angiography. Yeah. And what we have seen is almost 75% of those patients are going to have the umbrella term ANOCA. ANOCA is divided into many different endotypes, which we'll, which we'll get to later. Yeah. But that number is astounding, how many patients are falling through the cracks. Absolutely. So this is, uh, I mean, such a timely topic. And then we are you going to use this terminology, coronary flow reserve. Everybody knows it, which is the CFR represent the ratio of hyperemic to baseline coronary blood flow. And which can you do it in the cath lab now? You don't have to worry about non vagi with MRI or other thing. Then microvascular resistance. Tell us a little more on the IMR and now they're talking about hyperemic MR. Yeah. So IMR is an index of microvascular resistance. It's a it's a a metric that we use in the cath lab that really targets the microvascular system. Coronary flow reserve is great. There's a lot of literature behind it. When you have reduced flow reserve, you have increased uh, events down the line. The problem is it's dependent on resting coronary blood flow. And that indice is variable from day to day, from minute to minute. And what the index of microvascular resistance is takes away that resting, that resting metric. And it looks specifically at the microvascular system. Um, and this is, came out probably in 2004 initially. And a lot of literature now is really diving into um, measuring this to help identify patients with microvascular dysfunction. 
Um, hyperemic microvascular reserve. Uh, this is an entity that is really done by Doppler flow. So it's not really something we do here in our cath lab. Uh, if you're still doing CFR with Doppler flow, then that's a measurement you can do, but not with the current technology that we use. Now, this terminology, there are a few papers that have come up also on the regist registive reserve yeah. ratio, RRR. Yep. So the resistive ratio, resistive reserve ratio is an index of resting microvascular resistance versus the hyperemic microvascular resistance. And we use a cutoff value, I think, of three. So when, you're, when your resistive reserve ratio is less than three, it's another predictor of events. You know, we're looking to help, help really identify those patients that are at, at risk. Because what you'll see when you have all these variables, one up, one down, this one up, this one down, it creates a lot of confusion. So the more specific tests we can have to identify patients that are at higher risk, the better it's going to be for all those operators that are doing this study. So the RR is another measure of that. Now, absolute coronary blood flow is very tough to measure. We cannot measure. We it. don't do that, no. Yeah, we cannot do it uh, no. because that requires a special catheter, not available. But those are the four. And then you can have a combination. Abnormal CFR, which is the flow reserve, and microvascular yeah. resistance, isolated abnormal CFR, isolated abnormal IMR, yeah. and of course, normal CFR and microvascular resistance. These are the four groups yeah. which we need to worry about, one, two, and three. Which one is more troublesome? So group one. So group one is the, those are the patients that are going to have an abnormal CFR, so CFR that's less than 2.5, and they're going to have a high index of microvascular resistance greater than 25, these are the patients that are clearly high risk for cardiovascular events going forward. Yes. And we can identify those endotypes very simply and ascribe uh, prescribed treatment for that. The isolated CFR and the isolated abnormal IMR, these are a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, that's why we need more information, more data to help really determine what this, these endotypes represent. Uh, and then the group four is normal. Normal, yep. And, and this is almost as powerful as group one. Yeah. When your patient keeps coming back to the health system with chest pain and you've prescribed all these medications, if you can tell them you do not have microvascular dysfunction, get rid of the medications. That's a very powerful tool. Yep. And these are incorporating in the guidelines also yep. now? Current guidelines now were a class 2A indication for patients that come in with chest pain. If you have ruled out obstructive coronary disease, you then it's, it's now a 2A indication to go through what we now term coronary function testing. Um, that is a, a new term that we're using that really uses the new technology, the modalities to test patients for this entity. Um, and we are now at a two-way indication, which is great. And if some of the insurance company had to adopt it, I can tell you I'm having a trouble yeah. getting approval. They are approving the angiogram. Uh, but I said, I don't need the angiogram because we had done the CT angio completely normal. Correct. We want to bring patient for the co co coronary functional testing. Correct. Did not approve. Yep. And Didn't uh, approve. We're the still insurance companies trouble. have to catch up. Yeah. Insurance but has one, to catch up. one comment. So there are non-invasive ways of testing the microvascular. But what's an important lesson is, in my opinion, it's in the cath lab where we're able to capture it all. A PET scan, a cardiac MR are fantastic for measuring coronary blood flow, but you are going to miss the endothelial dependent mechanisms. Vasospasm, you're not going to detect that on a PET scan. A PET scan is going to miss a myocardial bridge, which is what a CAT scan is going to identify. So we can detect all these in the cath lab through a very, very uh, specific protocol. And that is actually, you have done very nicely, uh, yep. put it together. I mean, beautiful, uh, I would say, central illustration, one of the high, best I have seen. I would say one of the best was our um, ISR, uh, which we have central figure, but uh, that also you quoted quite a bit. But this <laughs> one is really uh, take us together. I think this is the crux of the whole subject, it is. which we are doing that forget the option, uh, not forget. I mean, once you eliminated obstructive CAD, this is what we are facing, that doing the IVS and coronary physiology yeah. with the myocardial bridge, but then you go to the small vessels in terms of acetylcholine and coronary flow reserve. So if you can com comment on this, exactly. how do you take it? Exactly. Yeah. So starting with the patient selection, we already talked about it, the patients with angina, and you have a high suspicion for ANOCA. Um, it, it, and in fact, you can have a normal stress test now. We all know the stress tests are not perfect in identifying ischemia. So if you have a symptomatic patient with a normal stress test, even a normal coronary CT, 
these are the patients that we want to study. Um, obviously, ischemia is helpful, but if it's not there, it's okay. We then move down to ruling out obstructive coronary disease, uh, and we know we can use uh, hyperemic or non-hyperemic indices to do that. If that's negative and there's nothing obstructive, then we move to coronary function testing. And the way I do it, we do it here in the cath lab, is we first start with assessing spastic or, or, or endothelial dependent mechanisms and we do this by infusing acetylcholine in a very strict protocol uh, through the coronary artery and assessing for both epicardial and microvascular um, and that's your second and fourth box. If those are positive, we like to continue to get a full picture, but if they're negative, you're going to take the next step, which is just assessing the coronary microvascular function. And that's done through the platform brought to us by Abbott, which is a core flow system. It's a pressure temperature wire. We put down the coronary artery and we give saline boluses at rest and then with hyperemia, and we calculate our CFR, IMR, uh, and all these other indices. If that is then negative, we have to take the next step. And the next step is imaging the artery to look for myocardial bridging. Uh, and this is something we're starting to adapt here more often. I'm finding more bridges uh, than I uh, ever anticipated. And in fact, what I'm seeing is patients that have mid-LAD spasm or endothelial dysfunction. In the past, I've stopped there, but now I'm imaging them and I'm seeing that that is associated very highly with myocardial bridging. Um, and so then if you see a myocardial bridge, you actually want to take the next step and do a debutamine challenge and measuring diastolic FFR, which is another uh, metric that we do with the same wire. Beautiful. And everything is put in this picture uh, very nicely. And of course, I, I mentioned here, uh, individual points, beautiful uh, continuation of the same yep. point. Has been and then Doppler thermodilution. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is comparing coronary Doppler, yeah. which is really not used anymore. Yeah, we don't use and uh, the, and this is about uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction with a the thermodilution. We yeah, a little spoken, yeah. a little uh, anagram for CAS CMD. This is basically just to do it. This is the acetylcholine. That is about acetylcholine. Everybody talks about that. Where do you get the acetylcholine? Yeah, so right. it's it has to be. We work very closely with our pharmacy here. Uh, we use an intraocular preparation or ocular preparation. It's not a coronary preparation. Uh, we they reconstituted for us in the lab a turnaround time of about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, it lasts for up to four hours. Um, there's some some variability with that, but we infuse it directly through the coronary artery. This is an incredibly safe protocol. The major the the the, the prevalence of major risk is less than one percent, being V-fib atrial fibrillation, bradycardia, uh, asystole is all less than 1%, which outperforms some of the old protocols that we use for acetylcholine and ergonavine. Ergonavine, <laughs> yes. I'm the days of the ergonavine. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the CFT center. Yeah, uh, and this is a yeah, really important, important part. Yeah. So the yeah. CFT center is the crux of patients that need to be evaluated for chest pain. We can't just do it here in the cath lab. The patients have to come from cardiologists and they get referred in, but then they have to Followed. And that following is regard is after we prescribe a treatment to titrate therapy to them. It requires nutritional, obesity management, cardiovascular risk factor management, pharmacy involvement, uh, and then the research staff to identify and help us build um, registries. Beautiful. And has put it very nicely to develop the what required for the coronary functional tester. Uh, testing center. Yep. And then now we we actually already spoken about. Yep. So this is a part two of the protocol, the paper that they're basically going with the treatment yeah. uh, for individual aspect, uh, which uh, we start from here. Yeah. Uh, so there's not, a, the, the treatment is, yeah. this is a work in progress. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about this field is this is evolving. But if you take each endotype on the top, the yeah. coronary microvascular dysfunction, you have a patient with a low CFR, high IMR along with the usual things we talk about, cardiovascular risk factor, the specific therapy we want to use are beta blockers. And we want to target those beta blockers that have vasodilatory properties and low uh, intrinsic sympathomethetic activity. So the, the telltale, the classic one is um, bistolic yeah. or nevibavol. Nevibavol, yeah. Um, microvascular spasm, the, the, the treatment uh, crux of treatments really focuses on the calcium channel blockers, uh, the dihydropyridines, uh, also non-dihydropyridines. We want to avoid uh, long-acting nitrate, really that and epicardial spasm. But what happens is patients can get, um, uh, they can tolerate 
tolerance to the nitrates, and if they remove the nitrates, they can have rebound spasms. So it's not our first line treatment. Endothelial dysfunction is largely on risk factor control, which we know smoking cessation. Epicardial spasm, you're going to focus on your calcium channel blockers, both di and non dihydropyridine. And then bridging is really focusing around uh, decreasing the inotropic response of the bridge with beta blockers. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nicely put in. And this we have to, you know, com uh, concentrated on the medical therapy and so. Yeah, and these are all yeah, things in... in, in, in the, yeah. And then there are actually some patients with a nerve stimulation, EECP yeah. and uh, coronary sinus reducer. All these things are possible and we have done all. We have done the nerve stimulation, we have sent the yeah. EECP and of course the coronary sinus reducer trial ongoing in Mount Sinai. And uh, this is all put it together in terms of uh, data collection and the conclusion was very simple that this is the new entity we are un understanding and the recommendations will come. And only you can respect it when you start doing it and patients respond. Correct. Correct. And, and, and the idea is you have to do it. Yeah. And you have to start seeing this with your own eyes to realize it um, and understand the, the, the physiology behind it. So tell so me about, they're exist. talking about, uh, just one second, last time on this point and we go, the, they're saying that, uh, are they creating a registry that people have to put in the data just like we have ACC, NCDR and so? We are. We have not identified the specific site for the registries, but we have two or three uh, that are in the country that are going to start enrolling. There's also a couple trials that are ongoing right yeah. now, uh, one particularly uh, up north of us and in the south. Uh, they're enrolling these patients okay. uh, and hopefully we'll be doing the same here but samir yeah question yes that was the last part was the one you just answered there were two yeah. questions uh, how does one get involved with the mvn and uh, help creating cft centers uh, joseph fantastic fantastic job Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so obviously, the, the microvascular network, uh, feel free to email me. Um, it is sponsored through Abbott, um, the Abbott Vascular Group, and they're happy to have new members involved. And so you can get the technology that you need to do this. And the simple email is joseph.sweeney, uh, S-W-E-N-Y, at mountsanai.org. That's it. So this is just to complete our uh, presentation of today, the meta-analysis uh, the, of imaging versus angio-guided PCI, triple thumbs up. OCT versus angio-guided PCI, bifurcation lesion, two thumbs up. OCT versus angio-guided PCI, the complex lesion, illumin, uh, no difference in my opinion. Same thing, <coughs> OCT versus IVAS imaging guided PCI, no difference. So both are equal. And of course, we have spoken quite a bit about uh, this ANOCA type of patients. So lastly, uh, to complete our three uh, questions. One, what is the false uh, uh, answer for this illumin trial? Similar TLF in OCT versus angio group, higher post-PCI MSA in OCT versus Versus angio group, higher thrombosis in OCT versus angio group, similar MI in OCT versus angio group, and similar revascularization OCT versus angio group, and answer clearly is C. There was lower stent thrombosis in OCT versus angio group. Second, in the October trial, which is statement is false, similar PO patient oriented uh, cardiac endpoints between two groups, similar mortality, similar stent thrombosis, similar TLR, and similar MACE between two groups. No, answer was MACE was low in the OCT group versus the angio guided group. The third question based on the octavus, the what is the statement is true. Similar contrast used between two groups, similar stent optimization criteria met between two groups, similar more than 90% stent expansion in IVAS versus OCT group, lower MACE in IVAS versus OCT group and lower mal opposition. And answer there basically the lower which was a higher mile of lower mal opposition in IVAS uh, versus OCT group. Clearly you saw everything else. Uh, was similar. So similar contrast? No. More contrast used in the OCT. Similar stent optimization criteria? No. IVAS has a better stent optimization criteria, more than 90% stent expansion, and message was equal between two of them. With that note, we complete our today's presentation, and thanks everyone for going beyond the uh, today because excellent case demonstration and a uh, little bit of uh, this uh, update in teaching. So our diode was, uh, yeah. just to come, finish, our diode was 140 cc with an air karma of 0 0.9 and total time fluoro was 23 minutes. Beautiful. 
Uh, Anu and uh, uh, Samin, many, many congratulations coming your way for an excellent case. Uh, Joseph, fantastic description of a very exciting area. And I want to thank uh, many of our viewers, uh, including Dr. Mahmoud El Raiz from Egypt. Uh, thank you for your participation. We'll see you on the next session on October 17th. Uh, about December 7th, on November 7th. Uh, go ahead, Samin. You have yeah, some announcement yeah. to make about. Yeah. For instruction. Oh, the CCC November will be on the November seventh. Oh, yeah. So November date. So as we said, since we started uh, until next month, will be always third Tuesday. Now in November, because of some uh, the very first time, will deviate from the third uh, uh, third Tuesday uh, to uh, second uh, first Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday, first Tuesday November. November that will be the November 7th or life. so, but they will announce it uh, uh, next month. So compared to other, we have maintained the same date, uh, will change one time uh, in the lifetime of the CCC life. <laughs> we'll uh, confirm that uh, soon and thank you yeah. everybody and yeah. we'll see yeah. you next time.